We come on the air tonight at 6 as unrest continues across the United States, including right here in Toledo. Protesters taking to the streets downtown since earlier this afternoon, demanding justice for George Floyd, who died in Minneapolis police custody on Monday. Since then, demonstrations have popped up in cities small and large across the country. We have team coverage tonight covering these protests across the metro. Michael Tater and Emma Henderson have been speaking with folks at different local demonstrations. We'll get to them in just moments. Amazing grace How sweet is the sound emotional moments in Minneapolis earlier today. Meanwhile, volunteers showed up to sweep up debris and help clean up stores that were looted after a fourth night of unrest in Minneapolis. This after the governor of Minnesota called in over 1000 members of the state's National Guard to help with protests. Those protests across the country after Floyd's death. Police officer Derek Chauvin is charged with murder and manslaughter. Demonstrators calling for the other officers who did not get charged to be charged as well. The governor of Minnesota saying this morning that many of the protesters are outside agitators, not from his state. Whether it be New York or Denver or Louisville or Las Vegas, there is no mayor in America that has the resources to push back on an organized attempt to destabilize civil society with no regard for life or property. Protests have erupted in at least 30 U.S. cities over the death of George Floyd, who again died less than a week ago in police custody. Right now, hundreds of demonstrators are in downtown Toledo marching and calling for justice after Floyd's death. Our Michael Tater live near the protest. Michael, what is the mood downtown at this hour? Well, Tyler, I think frustration sums it up best. Everyone that I spoke to at today's protest stressing that they're sick of seeing this happen over and over again and that enough is enough. You can see some police officers are stationed out here at the headquarters and the scene was very different just about an hour and a half ago. Some protesters remain, but hundreds stood to fill Jackson and North Erie to say enough is enough. Now, the Community Solidarity Response Network of Toledo organized this protest here right in front of TPD. Several speakers took to the podium to voice their concerns over George Floyd's death in police custody, but they also mentioned other names like Eric Garner and Freddie Gray, emphasizing the frustration the community here and across the country are feeling right now. Signs were displayed saying Black Lives Matter, we want accountability, and we want to be heard. Those are just some of the simple ideas stressed here today. Protesters and speakers from the black community say in 2020, they still feel like second-class citizens. Leaders emphasized from the start that there would be no violence at this rally, saying, quote, things would start positive and stay positive. Stay on topic. Stay on topic. The violence is understandable, but it's not working. It brought the cameras, but now it's time for us to speak the truth and do something different. And burning and looting and tearing up your own is not the option. Now, some protesters still do remain here on Jackson and North Erie. The protest did end peacefully here around 4.30 this afternoon, but a small group continued to march down North Erie toward Cherry Street. And our very own Emma Henderson caught on Facebook Live, TPD used some type of gas to dis disperse some of the protesters that were marching up there. We're still working to confirm exactly what led to that confrontation and why that was used. But again, you can find that video on our Facebook page, WTOL 11, and stay tuned on air and online for any further developments tonight. For live, for now, live in downtown Toledo, Michael Tater, WTOL 11. Michael, before we let you go, I understand you spoke with Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich downtown just a little while ago. What is he saying tonight? Well, Tyler, the mayor I spoke to before any of that uh, alleged violence happened up on Cherry Street. He said he showed up not to give any type of speech, but to listen to what all the protesters and the speakers were saying, saying that anything that does happen, he does not condone any violence of any kind, but he understands the actions that are happening here in Toledo and across the country, and that he's here to listen to see what is the best way to move forward. 
All right, Michael Tater, downtown tonight. Michael, thank you. Like we told you, these protests aren't only happening here, but in other cities all over the place, including places like Cleveland and Columbus. Governor Mike DeWine calling the Ohio National Guard and the Ohio State Highway Patrol in to help. The Columbus police have declared an emergency in the city's downtown area. Police say people should stay away from that area. They've also put up in place a mandatory curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. If anyone is out illegally, they will be arrested. Take a listen to what they just said. Sadly, there is a relatively small number of violent individuals who pose a specific threat and a real threat. Several businesses have been damaged during the Columbus protests and police have made earlier arrests, several arrests earlier this week. Police say five officers were hurt during Friday night's protests. Toledo Fire and Rescue also encouraging the Toledo community to protest peacefully. In an interview with WTOL 11, Private Sterling Ray says the city supports folks expressing their First Amendment rights, but wants to make sure the situation doesn't take a violent turn. Uh, we obviously, as a department and me as an individual, we we support that. Um, where we cross that line, obviously, is the wanton destruction, the things that we're seeing across the nation. What we want, we'd love to see here in our city is that uh, protesters gather, uh, do it peacefully. Ray says our community should also be thinking about the coronavirus still. He reminds us the pandemic isn't over yet and folks should protest while keeping healthy at the same time. The American Civil Liberties Union wants protesters to know they have rights as long as they protest peacefully. The ACLU of Ohio encourages people to stick to visible public areas like plazas and government buildings. It's also important to watch the roadways to avoid obstructing cars or coming across a pedestrian. Another way to protect yourself during a protest is to keep your phone handy. And regardless of what some police officers may tell you, you do have the right to photograph and to videotape uh, the actions of police and other uh, public officials. And I think it's also important to remind people that you have the right to remind other people of their rights. The ACLU is encouraging anyone to reach out to the organization if they believe their rights have been violated. We have this full list of advice on our free WTOL 11 News app. If a Toledo police crew showed up to a crime and they saw a person kneeling on an unconscious person's neck, that person would have been in handcuffs and booked that night. That officer should have been arrested that night, in my opinion. Chief George Crawl of Toledo Police says that the actions of the officer accused of killing George Floyd presents everyone else in law enforcement in a bad light. Demonstrators nationwide calling for sweeping changes in law enforcement. Here in Toledo, many protesters are asking local law enforcement to change their ways as well. Rashaya Gee is a local attorney and lecturer on race and American law. She believes it's going to take a large effort from police departments everywhere to change the way they police communities. I'm hoping that there's a, a, a realization within the power structure that if we want these people to behave differently, we have to behave differently. And because we have the greater responsibility and because we have the greater power and because we have the bigger budget and because we have this state sanctioned force and authority, we have the responsibility to initiate the change and it needs to be meaningful and, and here's how we're gonna do it. Present. She also says there's a long history between the African-American community and police forces across America. Our next goal as a community should be to work on strengthening that relationship. Protests began much earlier today with some taking to the streets around noon, demanding justice and calling for an end to police brutality. They gathered on Secor Road near Central Avenue in West Toledo. Emma Henderson spoke to some of the many people who started here before heading downtown. Hundreds of people have turned out here at Secor and Central for a protest in honor of George Floyd, the man who was killed in police custody earlier this week. Chants and horns are all you can hear on Secor and Central during this Black Lives Matter protest. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It was wrong that they killed that man, and it's good to see us all come together as one. Regardless if you're black, white, it don't matter. It's good to see us all come together. Lorenzo Leak is here because he feels there's been a delay in justice with only one police officer in custody following George Floyd's death. 
beautiful. It makes me feel beautiful. We ain't burning down nothing. We ain't tearing down nothing. I mean, it's good to see everybody come together. And let it be known that nine minutes on someone's neck is not an accident, and we stand firm on that decision. Black lives matter. You know, we just out here protesting, you know, for us. I mean, we matter. Justin Landry felt it was important to bring his young son Khalil along to see the protest. He got to see that his life matter at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I brought him out here so he know. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to be growing up in the next. He's going to be living in the situation that we got to, you know, so. Standing alongside people of all races, ages, and backgrounds. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. In West Toledo, Emma Henderson for WTOL 11. The Pentagon says it is ready to provide military help in Minneapolis, but Governor Tim Waltz has not requested federal troops. President Trump says troops are standing by if they're needed. They've got to be tough. They've got to be smart. We have our military ready, willing, and able if they ever want to call our military. But we can have troops on the ground very quickly. Protests are happening right now across Ohio and Michigan. In Detroit, police say a man in a van drove by a group of protesters and opened fire. A 19-year-old was killed. Detroit police now working to identify the victim. In downtown Cleveland, the local Black Lives Matter group holding an I Can't Breathe rally today. You can see in the background a fire that started along with a large group of protesters. Organizers saying, quote, every breath we take is precious, especially during this time. Several thousand people turned out. They just threw something on fire, Chris, a firecracker. Something's on fire. A frightening scene at the CNN Center in Atlanta last night. A protester tossing a firecracker at police. CNN say the, says the protest began peacefully with a march, but after the designated time for the rally, some protesters stuck around, leaving broken windows and spray painting messages on CNN's building. To follow our continuing coverage on George Floyd's death and the demonstrations happening here at home and across the country, text the word PROTEST to 419-248-1100. We'll send you the latest details as a direct link to your phone. You can also send us photos and videos if you were out at one of these demonstrations. Again, text them to 419-248-1100.